we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side You guys gonna help me film my video? Yeah Yeah All the good times just begun Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, as the title suggests, I'm going to be sharing my morning routine of a homeschool mom. So if you guys are new to my channel, basically this channel is all about how to have intentional time with your kids, um, how to also make time for yourself. I am a digital entrepreneur. I have a second channel all about that. Um, but also how to manage the chaos that is life with kids of any age, but especially little kids through homeschooling, through trying to succeed in online business and everything in between. So if you guys watched my channel a few years ago when I just had two kids, I felt like life was so much harder with two kids than it is with three. So now I have three kids, four years old and under my four, my oldest one is just about to turn five actually next week. So it's really like five years old and under. Um, and basically with three kids, I find that I am a much more organized, intentional, uh, stress, no, I wouldn't say stress free, definitely not stress free, but definitely, um, my stress level is greatly decreased since having my third kid. Um, and also I can manage my time a lot better just because of the simple fact that I have to. So today I am going to talk to you guys about intentional ways to make time for your kids in the morning to set up like a very restful and I guess like happy filled day. That all sounds like fluffy topics. Like I'm not gonna lie. It sounds like any other YouTube video, which everyone does morning routines. I have like several dozen probably on this channel alone. Um, you know, it's the same type of thing over and over and over, but it's the little things that I have made tweaks to ever since having my third kid that have made the world of a difference in the happiness through my family. So I'm going to share with you guys what those little but major tweaks are to our morning. And Ever since doing these things, you guys, I cannot tell you. I mean, I have two girls, my middle child and my eldest child, they're both girls and they're two years apart. All my kids are two years apart. And my oldest two kids, obviously minus the baby, fought like cats, like up until probably my third was born. It was very strange. They fought so much. They still fight like a lot, obviously. You're never gonna stop the, the you know, the sharing and is caring type of topics. But ever since this like morning routine that we've sort of like infused just like as me being like a solo mom when my husband is away at our office, um, they don't fight. There's like hardly any tantrums. Everybody's so much happier. I'm instilling habits. I'm training them well. Um, I obviously am not perfect at all. Definitely not perfect. But these things have really helped tame tantrums in the morning, help them just be happier, learn more, and be like just well-rounded kids, in my opinion, at least up until now. So yeah, that is basically what I'm going to share with you guys in this video. Definitely subscribe if you're new. And let's go on with the morning routine. Oh, you and I, we got it. So like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, after I had my third baby, I was seriously so determined to go from frantic, disorganized mom that I was of two kids to a semi put together and organized mom of three. I didn't know how I was going to do it because at the time it felt like it was impossible, but I just made it up in my mind that for me, three kids is going to be easier. And it's not like logically easier. You have one more child to feed, one more child to rear, you know, but just like in my own mental state, I wanted it to be easier for me. And basically out of desperation, when I was pregnant with my third baby boy, Oliver, that you see in the video, I was looking up books on how to like schedule your family. Cause I just felt like if I found the perfect routine or the perfect schedule that my life would be happy, everybody would be happy. And then obviously you guys know plot twist. We all know happiness comes from within, not from, you know, any other external circumstances. It's a choice, but anyways, I digress. So I found this book on Amazon and I'm going to put on the screen. It's called managers of their homes. Now it says it's a practical guide to daily scheduling for Christian homeschool families, but you do not have to be a Christian or 
a homeschool family to get like immense value from this book. And just the little like mental shifts I've learned in this book has changed my life. And one of them, you know, the key to a productive day starts the night before. And the biggest thing that I took away from reading this book is that the more you schedule your family's day and the more that you almost like take your role as the housekeeper, as the mom, as the wife, like, you know, you take pride in your job and it's not just something that you're trying to keep up with. Um, and you know, life is just coming at you with these little tiny kids, the more peace and the more just like at rest you're going to be with your family. And the more you're just going to feel in control because I was just, like I said, so tired of feeling out of control. I was so tired of the chaos. So I literally schedule almost every I would say like 30 minutes to an hour down the night before. Now this sounds absolutely neurotic. Like I am seriously well aware. Um, and there are some days that I don't do this. And at the end of the day, honestly, I'm so disappointed that I didn't do it because everyone's mood is just not the same. I am not extremely organized. I am not like super anal about scheduling. I honestly am very haphazard type of person. Like I was always a C student if that tells you anything. So I'm not a type A. I'm not a perfectionist by any means, but I found that the more kids I had, the more I had to take my job seriously. Like as this mother, as their role model, this idea, it can be implemented if you have one kid. Um, but just this idea that you should take it seriously. And if you schedule out the things that you you want to do with them, the habits you want to um, instill in them, what you want to teach them, and also just things that you want to personally get done around the house, like chores wise, meal wise, things like that then they're gonna actually get done in a timely manner. But I will go ahead and put on the screen here like a little snapshot of what our entire day sort of looks like. It's not like super crazy, but I definitely put like what type of craft we're gonna do and I think about it the night before. So like I literally look it up on Pinterest and I'm not that crafty, but like whatever I have in my house, I make sure I know that I'm going to intentionally have that time with them. But honestly, it's just nice for even like myself to know how I'm gonna entertain three little tiny kids all day long. Now today you will see in this video, it was like definitely just like a mom and kids day. We actually just went to the park and had a chill day um, and we didn't see anybody. So I don't always have to plan like exactly what we're doing for every 30 minutes if we're out and about or for seeing friends which is like most of our week I'm not gonna like schedule that in but if we are at home um, another big reason why I do schedule in really like 30 minute increments is because of that homeschooling like uh, you know Christian homeschooling um, scheduling book like I found because the woman in that book she's so smart I think she has like so many kids maybe like 10 or 6 I can't remember it was a lot and she said that you know toddlers especially between the ages of like 2 and probably five, if they are left on their own for like more than 30 minutes, like you can almost bet that a tantrum is going to ensue. Now I'm not scared of tantrums. It's not so much like that. Like I know they're necessary for development and all of those types of things. This isn't like a parenting you know, video right now, but I did test it and I tested her theory I let my kids do whatever the heck they wanted, like wander, linger around the house. Um, I don't always like give them things to like pacify them. I know being bored is like such an important part of development and childhood, um, but I didn't, you know, tell them anything. Like I didn't give them any kind of guidance. And sure enough, every 30 minutes, there's like some type of like a tantrum. So they know what to expect. They know that we change things up every 30 minutes. There's something to do for them. So they're not bored and fighting with each other. What'd you find? Your shoes? You gonna put them on? Okay. You're gonna do it. Me? Okay. Ever since I had Oliver, the third child, things yeah. definitely had to change. So every day of the week we have like tasks that I have to get done that I sort of enlist the kids to help me with. So like one of the days a week, it's like clean out the car. Another day, and I'm sure everyone but me has like done this already, but another day it's like tidy the, he is so wild, he just wants to crawl and like get this wire brush in front of him. Like seriously, um, no, you can't have that. Um, another day it's like clean the backyard and the front yard because there's might be like chalk, like clumps of chalk or like right now there's like a random blanket. Another day it's like clean the closets, you know, things like that. So today's chore is the front yard and the backyard. So we're like tending to, well, we do this every day, but tending to the things that we're growing and also the minivan, which is not fun, but Someone's gotta do it. But you know, everything takes like 10 years longer. How's it going, Annabelle? It's going good, thumbs up. <laughs> I also find that a big part of, I guess like schooling them, I do air quotes because we're not really doing proper school. It's just like, you know, good habits, instilling good habits and things like that. 
it's just like being consistent so we used to have you know a different we used to do something different every single day and we still do something different like our life's not utterly boring because i could not take it but we still have like the same rhythm to the days so they know that you know now is like <laughs> Time to pick up after yourself, time to, um, you know, go outside, just so they have something to look forward to. And they are just so much more peaceful when they know what to expect. So the biggest blessing about having the third child and why I say having three, I'm not gonna say it's easier, but it's easier in a lot of ways. Obviously there's, I don't wanna say pros and cons, but there's benefits and disadvantages to having multiple kids. Um, but the biggest blessing for me has been the fact that the two can occupy themselves when I put the baby to sleep. I don't know if you guys followed me back then when I had just two kids, but when I had just Annabelle and she was two, it was so hard on me because I didn't want to give her TV in order to put Scarlett to sleep um, when she was a baby for like seriously three times a day sometimes. And it was so hard for me too because I didn't do like crib training or anything like that so i nursed to sleep and i just like did not figure a way how to like flip the baby and leave with them with him i become an absolute pro so what do you need there you need the flower i mean there's always something what's wrong with you, you wanna... just trying to dig in the crack okay hold on so with oliver i can put him to sleep and i flip him and he sleeps on his stomach with his head to the side i'm watching him the whole time and i don't know we're not going to get into safe whatever we're not gonna get into all that right now safe sleeping because i feel like i'm a third time mom you do you but he sleeps on his stomach because if he slept on his back he would just like you know instant reflex wake up that's what they were that's what the first two kids did that's why i could never leave them and i'd always have to like just stay with them to sleep it was crazy i don't know so anyways i find that he can sleep on his stomach so much better and yeah, so when I am putting him to sleep, because I still nurse him to sleep, this is like the biggest, seriously biggest breakthrough for me as a mom. I nurse him to sleep, and every day I do it at the same times, like 10 and 2, and they know at this time that when I am putting him to sleep, they get like a craft or an activity, and I get it from like my mom cabinet, which is like a cabinet full of things to do. And then after, if they're good, we get to watch like a little five minute educational show. So there is a bribe, I guess, involved, but it's fine they're learning about i don't know one day it's like volcanoes it's like five minutes and they don't even really need it because they're like totally occupied with the activity or craft but they can play with each other versus like a two-year-old just be out here like watching tv like three or two times a day which is fine it's not going to kill them but yeah i just found that to be so hard when i only had two kids now that i have three they can play with each other and i also think it helps that they're all two years apart although i don't think that would really matter um, but yeah, that's what we do for like naps and I also wait to like school them or do something like as far as educating them um, When he's sleeping so it's much quieter as you can tell He's wild. He is wild. Look at him. He's literally digging in the crack. You can't be digging in the crack of the door Mister What do you got there? You got a plant It's very naughty Okay, so the other thing about, this video is turning into how to have three kids, but the other thing about like giving them an activity while I'm putting them to sleep so that they aren't screaming and fighting and they're not coming to get me and like ruining the nap, which would make any mom like lose her marbles, is I gotta be, like I said, organized. So I make sure that I come in here and I like pre-think like what are they gonna do? So today for their activity and we'll see. So far, knock on wood, um, it hasn't messed me up yet. And I've been doing it for like, I think a month, like having them do things on their own because Doug is not here, my husband. So today I'm, I got these stickers and they're gonna make Christmas cards for their grandparents. Is that fun, Annabelle? Yeah, she, she gets really excited because it's like new things. I don't like her to buy things because I have stuff from like the dollar store. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get out paper to cut because Scarlett can sit there and cut paper, my three-year-old, with like little toddler scissors for seriously 20 minutes. Like she'll just sit there and be in a trance. It's so weird. I don't know about your kids. My kids, they do not like coloring books. Like I don't know why coloring books are a thing. It's probably just my kids. They might just be bored of everything, but they're not ones to just sit there and color in a book. They're three and almost five. She turns five this week. And if I just give them coloring books, they'd be bored in like two seconds. So I have to get like stickers and glue and make a whole mess, but it's fine. Cause you know, I feel good when it's put away. So gonna get all this out very random but i bought this book of poems from like an influencer um if you guys follow the account on instagram things i bought and liked so random but she basically shared a page in this book and i thought oh my gosh how cute what a 
like nice little coffee table book and then I was too cheap and got the soft cover version but whatever um, so this is the book and if you guys just I don't know want to feel moved this morning I don't know um, you can pause this page and read it it's so cute I don't know okay so this is sort of like a mom hack if you will um, I feel like I am late to the bandwagon with a lot of these things I don't know I had a lot of kids really fast at least it feels like it in five years I had three um, or four years and I don't know I'm learning all the things you know I feel like still a noob mom but basically if you want your kids to do something for you you give unto them first it's like any person and oftentimes I feel like we forget but they need to feel like you care about them before they go and do something nice for you because you know little toddlers we love them but they're little you know selfish human beings like we all are right so basically before I put the baby to sleep I make it a point to play tag with Scarlett and Annabelle play hide and seek for like 10 15 20 minutes something around there and they will seriously play quietly they you know respect me enough because I care for them to give them that time before I have to go do something so before I take a phone call if I ever do which is rare or before I have to do something for myself like clean something out or whatever I will give them un like focused uninterrupted dedicated time for like 20 minutes and they are just seriously sweet little angels like it is you know the best I don't know, tip that I've ever heard, I guess. So twice a week, we have these days and I call them, I don't know, we made it up, but it's like mom mom days. And it's basically a day where me and the kids are alone pretty much all day from like, I don't know, right when they wake up, my husband's already gone working out at our office, um, up and probably until like 4.30 or maybe a little bit later. And we have these days because I find that it's just so beneficial if we separate work from play like work from like family life he was working out of the home and so was I for like the last I'm not kidding like I don't know since 2018 and it was just very difficult like with boundaries but I think that's like I'll save that for another video um so yeah we have these days where it's just me and the kids and on these two days a week we really focus on habit training so there's other days for socializing I know it seems like you know what do we do like sit here and like do this every single day but remember this is like a couple minutes of our entire like week you know um so we definitely like do socializing and take our kids to, like taekwondo and ballet and like church things and all the types of things homeschool co-op but two days a week we really don't do anything and we just like take it super slow we like bake you know yummy food and like clean things out and play with the neighbor kids. And that is one of these days that I'm filming. So today we're just focusing on habits, like getting ready, making sure you look presentable, we're really focusing on the word diligence and like what that means. And then we're gonna head out to the park and the library. Nobody look at my minivan. That's why it's on the list for today to clean. Hi Annabelle. So right now we're bringing Doug his lunch and we're gonna go on a picnic, huh girls? Mm -hmm. Maybe we're gonna go watch bird watching. Yeah. Annabelle's back there. I woke the baby up from his nap, so he's kind of cross. You might see like a couple moments of our day, right? Like one day out of the week, and you might think things like, oh, their life is so boring, or, you know, that's a crazy homeschool mom that like schedules our kids to a T and they have like no time to be kids. I don't know what you might be thinking, but you also have to know that like schedules, at least for us, have given us so much freedom. And you might just see like a couple moments of our day and assume so many things, but you might also not know that like my husband and I are digital entrepreneurs. So we take a lot of risks in our life, our finances, our business. And we've been able to, because of scheduling and prioritizing our family over anything else in life, we've been able to also grow such an amazing online business, serving hundreds of people, just working nights and naps over the last two years. So maybe I'll go into that like in a different video, um, but just know that like, I don't know, scheduling our life and especially our morning routine has really served our family so well and I'd highly, highly recommend it. Definitely don't downplay it even if you do work full time um, because you can do it on the weekends too and it's truly so freeing. We'll see you at our next video. Bye.